HKM TV back with you again for the second part of a doubleheader, this time featuring the girls' varsity squad as the Hopkinton Hillers, as the 6 and 1 Hopkinton Hillers host the 6 and 2 Medfield Warriors. Hi, I'm Tim Haladic again here with you with Steve Spector. And Steve, we saw a great, great uh, high intensity game for the first part for the boys with Hopkinton coming out with the victory. What do you think we're going to see here against uh, another top flight TVL team for the girls? Well, uh, Tim, again, after after that first game, the Hillers. What I hope to see is a is a double, you know, double win for right. the Hillers. That would be great. But you know, Medfield and and Hoppington always a big rivalry, and um, you know, with Medfield six and six and two and Hillers six and one, this is a kind of a midseason showdown here. Yeah, both undefeated in the TVL. Something's going to give tonight. Good crowd here. It's kind of a spillover from the first boys game. Right, as Goglin wins the tip. Over the equally tall Ariana, or excuse me, Sianna Kinney. Marissa Prawl launches the three to start, and she knocks it down. Just like the boys starting things off with a quick three-pointer. Got to love that. That's a good start. And Lily Morningstar, much shorter, but still taking the challenge of guarding Maggie McCarthy, who has been a staple of this Medfield team for the past four years. Three-point shot no good from Aaron Seibel. This one goes out of bounds. Hopkinson takes over. Yeah, always a always a big rivalry, the towns and, and all the sports for many years. And uh, you know, Medfield coming into the gym here, uh, looking to pull out a road win, and uh, Hillers are definitely uh, going to dig their heels in. Probably going to be a showdown, kind of a. Absolutely, don't, don't, don't I expect this one to go wire to wire. Yeah, this doesn't. I don't think this is going to be a blowout in either direction. Prawl steps in, jump shot no good, grabbed from Kinney by Kinney. Sienna Kinney, six foot three, one of the taller players in the Tri Valley League, matches up well with Gogolin. Ooh, that's a walk. Yep, and Kinney was hit with the travel. Another turnover from Medfield. Not much ball pressure coming up against Hopkinton. Corby's allowed to take her time. Open for three. Kevney, bit too strong. Rebounded by McCarthy. She almost lost it into the hands of Marissa Prawl. Baseline drive turned away was Tristani. Now the ball in the hands of Seibel. Tough D, Tillers, shot clock under 10. Down to five seconds or thereabouts. Great defense, Corby pulls it away. Beautiful Did play. not see Golden running down, now Kevney does. A bit too unselfish with that pass there. And rockets it by Gogolin. Medfield will take over. Yeah, Corby, very, very tough defender. Doesn't take as many shots. I'd love to see her take a few more shots than she has. Uh, taken so far this year but one thing she does do she disrupts things defensively almost every time we've seen her play and there was a good example of that causing a turnover and uh, looked like a drag pivot mm -hmm. foot there no travel called but Goglin takes the ball away anyway up to Kevney she is hit absorbs contact foul on the floor Hopkinton will inbound yep we got you know the Hillers with a Really deep. Marissa Paul from Ooh, three knocks it one. down. Six quick points for Prawl. We saw that earlier with uh, McKenzie and the boys hitting a couple early three pointers. And nice way to start the game up six zip. Yeah, last year, Prawl, who was just a junior, did not see nearly as much time as she does as she has been this year. Now, our, that can be uh, attributed to. Uh, Hopkinton having a deeper team, but now you can clearly see Marissa Prawl has worked on that three-point shot, and it's uh, definitely paid big dividends for this Hopkinton team, and for Prawl in particular, getting a lot of minutes as Morningstar wrestles for that ball and ends up throwing it out of bounds, trying to get it to a teammate. But Prawl has had a huge impact this year, and she's responsible for the 6-0 lead thus far for Hopkinton. As Millis, excuse me, I keep doing that, as Metfield yeah. <laughs> will, will inbound. Gets it into Kinney. Great defense from Goglin. Pushes her away from the hoop. And then a putback opportunity by Tristani. Easy. No good. Easy. Prawl definitely absorbed some contact there, but no foul called. 
as Medfield tries to take advantage and launches a pass down the court. Turnover. Coach Greco is telling this girls to chill. You know, they, they're a little out of control, little, you know, early in the game. Is, little, that a, is that a cold weather joke again? <laughs> and that's just got lucky with that one. It's, <laughs> but they, they, they're a little out of control. Mm -hmm. um, they might be cold, too. Yeah, and a tough uh, pass there from Morningstar. McCarthy grabs it now. Shot fired baseline. Jumper is short from Emma Anderson. Ooh, off. Yep. And Kinney and Kevney were fighting for it. Last off of Kevney. Stays with Medfield. 4.36 left in the first quarter. Medfield yet to score. Anderson fires a three and she knocks it down. And they must have heard you, yeah, Steve. Boy, I, they I, knocked I, down I spoke that too three. soon. I hate when I do that. <laughs> <laughs> it's a battle of three point shots so far. And Prawl again had an open three, but Morningstar took one too many steps there, hit with a travel. Unfortunate for Hopkinton, because as I said, Prawl had spotted up for an open three. Yeah, a little out of, control, out of control there. Now Corby and Morningstar will take a seat. Gladue and Hubner enter for the first time this game. Again, 6-3 lead for Hopkinton. Four minutes left here in the first quarter. And McCarthy can't handle that pass. Stolen away by Hubner. Kevney drives baseline, can't get the reverse to go. Goglin fighting for it. Now Kevney somehow gets it back in the hands of Goglin. She aggressive to the hoop. Three seconds. She draws oh. a foul. Yep, two shots coming. And Ivy Goglin, I'd say in particular the last two to three games, her probably her shooting percentage hasn't been that great, but her rebounds and free throw attempts have been in double digits. She's been very aggressive. She calling has, for her shots the past three games. She has the ability, ability to take over the game, as of as do a few other Hiller girls. Uh, offensively, and she gets into into a zone and into a groove. She she can easily get you know points in bunches. Mm -hmm. uh, and that last play, they were fortunate. I I I, I kind of shouted out three seconds because mm -hmm. um, Reagan was um, was on the floor in the three-point land right. for a while, and then the refs kind of let her camp out there. <laughs> but um, anyway, the Hillers are up eight to three at this point. Yeah, at, at any rate, Goglin knocks down both of the free throws. Five-point lead now for Hopkinton. McCarthy drives baseline, nice pass. Emma Anderson can't do much with it. Seems to be Kayla McNeil, that one. McNeil fires just inside the three-point line. No good. A great box out from Hubner. She boxed out McCarthy about 15 feet away from the hoop. But that was why Hawkinson got that rebound. And then on the other end, McCarthy knocks the ball out of bounds. Nice defensive play. Marissa Prowl taking a breather after launching two three-pointers. Again, lots of good depth for the Hiller girls. Goglin inside gets Big rejected block. by Kinney. That's a tough uh, disruptive di disruptive player for the Warriors down low there. Quick three fire from Emma Anderson. Ill-advised shot there. Didn't hit anything. Ball goes out of bounds as Tess Patry tried to keep it inbound. Inbounds, no luck. Looking for a half-court trap here. Good morning, Star blows right by. She takes it the whole way. Wow. Left hand scoop. Good for... Lily Morningstar in a quick timeout called by uh, Medfield's Mark Nickerson. Well, sort of a similar start to the to the girls' yeah, game as the really similar. <laughs> you know, a couple of quick three pointers, a nice uh, seven point cushion with 2:49 left in the first quarter, and lots of folks piling into the gym here, even with, without any heat. If I haven't mentioned that enough tonight, it's <laughs> just can't can't help it. Right. <laughs> but kind of um, tough to ignore. We certainly hope that everyone's staying warm, and the players, certainly the uh, the Hiller girls, are heating up so far with a 10-3 lead and a tough D. A little chaotic out there. Both teams are kind of getting their legs under them, but right. certainly uh, a great start for the Hillers to get the, this uh, second game going. Yeah, we saw Marissa Prawl launch those two three-pointers to open things up offensively for the Hillers. And Maggie McCarthy... 
with the three on the other side for Hopkinton, for, excuse me, for Medfield, and that leaves us at 10 to three. But not many chances offensively thus far. It's only been about five and a little over five minutes here in the, in the uh, first quarter, but Hopkinton has definitely made their imprint defensively on this game, really only allowing that one scoring opportunity for Medfield. We'll see what Medfield can do now as they try to change the tune as McCarthy brings it up. McCarthy pulls it back, launches it over to Patry. Good D. But Gladue knocks it out of bounds. Stays with Medfield. Another scrappy player for the Hillers. Gladue comes, comes in off the bench, gets lots of playing time, and gets a hand in that ball. Patry again with it. Looking for help, finds it in McCarthy. Steps back, launches a three over Morningstar. Nice box, too. And oh. Lilly loses the ball. Patry with the layup, blocked by Livia Gladue. Olivia Gladue, about the same height as Lily Morningstar, the two smallest players on the court. She comes out of nowhere to reject that shot. Got her Hiller, Hiller teammates off the bench on that one. Yeah, unfortunately, uh, Morningstar lost uh, her balance, lost the ball, and her teammate came and rescued the situation with a nice block. And now Medfield will inbound under Hopkinton's hoop, down seven. 2.19 left here in this first quarter. Tough defense from Morningstar making that inbounds pass nice top, block. and then she gets a block. She gets a hand on the taller McCarthy shot. Goglin wants the ball. Hubner drives, gets it inside. Goglin turns, shot, no good. Nice play from Goglin, just couldn't find the mark. Now Patry has it for Medfield. Yeah, Sienna Kinney, sophomore, six foot three for Medfield, disrupted that shot. Didn't get the block, but. Gets the ball inside now. Her shot, not close to the hoop, but she was fouled. Two shots coming for Kinney. Certainly, uh, I want to keep an eye on, on this play here. Kinney, she's only a sophomore. Six foot three could, have, could be a force in the Tri Valley League over the next few years. First free throw, no good for the six foot three sophomore. Still a 10 to three lead for Hopkinton. 140 left here in this first, first quarter. Kenny's second free throw up and good. 10 to four lead now. Morningstar passes it up to Kevney, who fires the open three. She <laughs> knocks it down. Hopkinson making midfield pay for that press. Beautiful uh, release by Kevney. That'll maybe make Medfield think twice about putting the pressure on if they're going to break the press like that. Morningstar just hounding McCarthy. Gladue comes up with a steal and then draws the loose ball, draws the foul from... Emma Anderson got a bit too aggressive with the reach there, but a great play all around from Morningstar and Gladue. Definitely a good, good couple minutes by uh, yeah, Gladue. The and fans uh, acknowledging that as she exits towards the bench. Kevney tries to get inside to Gogle, and she's wrapped up by about a couple of Medfield players. This is a jump ball, goes to Medfield. Yeah, as you said earlier, Maggie McCarthy, one of the top players, uh, senior captain for Medfield, hasn't done much offensively in the first quarter with one minute left. Medfield down 13 to four, but that's a tribute to Morningstar and some other players on the Hillers who shut her down. There was a travel that everybody seems to. And McCarthy, uh -oh. great pass down low to Kinney. Kinney can't finish, and Kevney grabs the board. And then Kevney grabs the, or draws the foul there, Tess Patry. Again, trying to reach through the body of Kevney. And now Kevney will take his seat. Caroline Cannell, the freshman, seeing some early minutes. 45 seconds here left in the first quarter. 13-4 lead for Hopkinton.
Corbin dribbling the ball, lost it out of bounds, last off of Medfield. Medfield, four points in the first quarter, 34 seconds left. Mm -hmm. I mean, you get to tip your hat to the defensive pressure of the Hillers to just complete him, completely shut him down. Fifteen seconds left on the shot clock for Hopkinton. Cannell drives, partially blocked. Goglin saw it coming, rushed in there to grab the ball, and another another jump ball called. I believe this one stays with Hopkinton. Yep, it does. And Hopkinton will have nine seconds left on the shot clock to get a shot off. And Corby's looking for someone. Finally gets it into Morningstar. Morningstar drives, Ooh. ends up booting it out of bounds, but she was fouled beforehand. This one should be on the floor, and that will give Hopkinton the option to take the final shot of this first quarter. Kind of got bailed out, bailed out in that one because um, Morningstar was a little out of control going to the hoop. She mm -hmm. kicked it out of bounds, but she got fouled right before that. Right. And Hopkinton, I'm sure, will take the reset shot clock. Hubner with it. Had to wrestle it out of amongst, among some trees. And Morningstar turns the ball over. Another jump ball. And another jump ball. This one will go to Medfield. Just a shade under nine seconds left for Medfield to get a buck, a basket, a shot off. Excuse me. 13-4 lead for Hopkinson. Good D by Corby. Five seconds left in the quarter. Seibel with it now to Patry. She launches the tough shot. No good, a rebound, second opportunity from Maeve Devlin, no good either. And Hopkinton, after jumping out to an early 6-0 lead, increases that to about nine points, 13-4 lead now after the first quarter. Well, you know, um, there are certainly some really top top teams in the Tri-Valley League, and we, we're looking at both of them tonight. Right. And we've seen the Hillers really um, have significant leads after one and two quarters against some other other teams that may not be as strong as Medfield but for them to have a 13 to 4 margin after one quarter is uh and then and then Medfield has five fouls to only the Hillers have one you know the Hillers will be in a one-on-one -on -one situation at, at least it appears that way shortly um so that's a pretty dominant first quarter for against a very tough Medfield right, team absolutely so. they're six and oh six and two for a reason so that's a good start for the Hillers, and I'm sure Coach Greco's going to be happy with that. And we got Kerry uh, Chatton and uh, Pat O'Brien and Anthony Gonzalez, also assistant coaches, helping out over there. Um, we got Jeanette Emerson keeping everybody uh, healthy in, in case anything happens. We have a great trainer down there keeping things calm. And um, if she could do something, uh, <laughs> turn up the heat, we would appreciate that. I have one of my friends is uh, heckling us. Uh, <laughs> My friend Rick Jacobs over there, but I'll talk to him later about that. <laughs> <laughs> you know, one thing that may be lost among the recent memory of Hopkinton fans, uh, a loss to Medfield, a very obviously similar Medfield team without a few of the seniors from last year in the sectional final. They lost 49-42 to in a game that um, I was there broadcasting and honestly thought um, Hopkinton should have won. But unfortunately, they were not able to. So perhaps some of those fires stoked by Coach Greco coming into this one and maybe responsible for this defensive swarm that we've seen. Could be. I think that's a good theory. Oh. <laughs> no. Got run over. Yeah, late foul called. As Marissa Prawl hit the floor, Ooh. seems to be okay getting up. It didn't look good. It didn't sound good. But a uh, tough player, man. She got run over by the Medfield player, but somehow the foul was on Prowl. Yep, Maggie McCarthy will be shooting two. Short on the first. I mean, that's another contributing factor, Tim, is um, McCarthy not really having a typical game tonight mm -hmm. for Medfield. And right. She probably would typically have a couple buckets or so by now, and when she hits her second of the two free throws to uh, bring the score to 13-5 to five now, Hillers. Some ball pressure from Aaron Seibel. No luck for Medfield. Oh, nice. Morningstar takes it all the way. Just a bit out of control on the release. Couldn't quite find the mark. Now McCarthy rushing up court with it for Medfield.
A very stagnant offense right now for Medfield. Five Base, seconds. Baseline drive. She just lost the ball. That, that was have a to shoot it. Not enough time. Yep. I thought that I thought they were gonna call a travel on Kayla McNeil, who lost the ball. It looked like to me it wasn't touched, and she went and picked it back up. But nothing called. But then a shot clock violation. Great defense again yeah, by Hopkinson. Again. Kevney takes the contact, can't quite find the mark. A rebound for McCarthy. Kind of ran out of real estate down there. Not a really good angle to, to get the shot off. Cross court pass to McCarthy. She launches a three, knocks it down. Very confident stroke there from McCarthy. 13 8 lead now for Hopkinton. Kinney takes a seat, as coming onto the court is Camilla Silk, a six foot freshman. So some young height for this Medfield team. Corby drives, had a lane, decided to give it up. Morningstar, now over to Prawl, her favorite side of the court. Mm. A bit too strong in the three, but Corby grabs the rebound. Now Prawl again, had an open three, ball tipped just slightly as she picks up the reach and foul, or draws the reach and foul. Still a 13 to eight lead for Hopkinton. 5.52 left here in the first half. And kind of almost very similar to the boys game. This game is going through waves of scoring. Oh, nice move. Oh. Morningstar can't quite get the tough lay in the go. Now ball in the hands of McCarthy, who's covered by Morningstar. Mc McNeil took a step with it. No travel called, and Ke Kevney tries to rip it away. Forces the jump ball. Some of the fans thought that was a travel, and I, I'd uh, have to agree on that. I would have to say there was a didn't look. Uh, it looked a little awkward, <laughs> if nothing else. But no call on that. But it's that field ball out of bounds. And ball into Seibel. Three launched from Anderson, no good. Foul called on Medfield. Camilla Looks like Silk. this. Yep, sorry, go ahead. Sue. Yeah, it's Camilla Silk, freshman, six foot forward. They got some young height in this team, but she was definitely over the back, and that's going to be a one on one situation for Ivy. Right, seven fouls going against Medfield. Hopkinton will be in the bonus for the rest of this first half, all 523 of it. This is where, you know, the games can be made or break and broken uh, on uh, the free throw line, right, even absolutely. though it's still plenty of time left in the first half. But, you know, if you hit, you know, eight out of ten free throws or thereabouts, you know, at that, that kind of a pace, it can keep, uh, keep things uh, the lead extended and Ivy hits the first one. Oh, sure. We saw in the, um, in the last game, in the boys' game, had Hopkinton missed a few of those earlier free throws, uh, Medfield would have been, wouldn't have given up with a minute or so left. They would have been right in the game, down only five. But those early free throws allowed Hawkinton that security. And right now, Goglin doing her best as she knocks down two. 15-8 lead for Hopkinton. Nice cut from McCarthy. Better pass from the freshman, Camilla Silk. No luck, though, as her shot's no good. And went out off of a Warrior, out of bounds, stays with Hopkinton. Looks like Prowl came out and Huebner's back in. Again, almost uh, a lot of the similar type players. Right. Good recovery. Corby doing all she could to get that pass Not off to Huebner. Ball kind of ate her up a bit and eventually trickles out of bounds. Well, Medfield's certainly hanging around. It's not like the, the Hillers are crushing the right crushing them, but the you know both teams really scrappy, intense defense, keeping the score kind of on the lower side so far. Morningstar jumping a bit too much around the three-point line. Lucky she didn't get hit with a foul, but McCarthy missed her shot. Now Morningstar looking for help, gets it to Kevney. 
Hubner now with it. Both thought about the three. Ball inside to Goglin. Over to Corby now. Great fake from Morningstar. She learned. She knew someone from Medfield was coming. Three-pointer, no good. Grab by Kinney. Good ball movement. Tough, you know, swarming defense by Medfield. It's tough to get the shot off. Seibel for three, launches it just a bit short, but Corby secures the rebound. Kevney, the pass to Morningstar. Morningstar, the good dish to Gogol, oh. and she can't finish the lay-in. Unfortunate there. Good passing. Had a you know, great job breaking, breaking the press, and then they just couldn't hit the, hit the layup at the other end. Ooh, pass to nowhere. Pass and to, a, a, to yeah, the a bit of a miscommunication there. McCarthy went to go set the pick for Seibel, and it was almost like a fake pick. She was going to roll right away. And McCarthy did not go to the hoop like Seibel thought. Seibel's pass trickles out of bounds, goes to Hopkinton. I thought our, our cameraman John Ritz was going to make a play on that, but he, he chose not to. <laughs> no, no, no need to get himself into, you know, cause injury or anything. Of course. He's a professional yeah, after all. Exactly. Gladue Kev over to Kevin in the corner for three. She knocks it down. Big hoop. No thoughts about no second thoughts about that one. Kevin knew as soon as she got the ball, she was firing that one up. That's her second three-pointer, if I'm not mistaken. The first one, she hit same situation. She knew she was gonna take it, squared up before she even got the ball. Seibel drives, tries to get into nice Kenny, play. but great swarming. Talk about swarming defense. It seemed like all five Hillers were there to take that ball away. Hubner drives baseline, kicks it out to Gladue. Now Kevney gets it back for three. No good. Grabbed by Silk. And Hubner somehow wrestles in there. Silk had clear possession of that ball, but Hubner took her, uh, took her chance, grabbed it, forced a jump ball. Again, for the younger players who are just trying to get some of the fundamentals down, that's a clear case of Camilla Silk, freshman, six-foot tall player for Medfield, had the rebound, brought it down to her waist, and Hubner, a nice shot by. Great look from uh, Kate Hubner. Sorry to yeah, interrupt your thing right. there, but absolutely fantastic pass. No look, found Gladue for a wide open hook shot. Nice finish. No, but Steve, like you said, this is the second time I've heard you today as a, a shot is partially blocked, and when a taller player brings the ball down, allows little guys to get in there and take it away. Oh, great nice. pass, another great look from Kate Huebner. Kate Huebner, the senior, making her impact felt with passing alone as Gogolin hits that bucket. And like you said, a timeout after a 22 to eight lead now. With two minutes, 11 seconds left in the first half. Yeah, I mean, the Hillers are on a nine to four spurt this, this quarter, uh, extending the lead 22 to eight. That's a pretty beefy lead against a very good team. And, you know, probably a, a good idea by Coach Mark Nickerson of Medfield to gather his girls and say, hey, plenty of time. Let's not let's not uh, freak out here, get our composure. And uh, they're more than capable of, you know, getting back in the game. But right now the Hillers ha are having their way and uh, almost three times the amount of points, uh, two minutes left or so in the, in the half. Uh, good crowd here, mostly parents. I think the kids are staying home. Uh, must be such a large TV audience listening to this broadcast at home. Uh, I would imagine. Yep. Given the, the crew we have, and not necessarily the announcers, but the crew is really outstanding. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> and uh, speaking of the crew, we have uh, on the cameras Bob Hamilton, John Ritz, and Mary Arnott. Tom Dings is doing the directing, and Samantha Dings doing the graphics. We really appreciate it. Everyone's support here, keeping things calm for the most part. But it's early. Right. <laughs> it still is early. <laughs> now McCarthy will bring the ball up, and Morningstar's out, so Kate Huner is tasked with guarding the Medfield senior. Double team. Ball inside to Kinney. Her shot up and in. We've talked about McCarthy not having her typical game, um, but... And sometimes you don't always get uh, peak post P 
peak production from your stars. It's good. We're going to have to look towards some other midfield warriors to kind of pick up the slack. While McCarthy has Hubner and Morningstar hounding her the entire game. And we saw Kenny with the bucket there. We'll see if Kenny can kind of impose her presence again and again. Seibel oh, nice going play. for that pick and roll with McCarthy. Another miscommunication. Easy, easy. easy. And play. now Gladu with it over to Corby. Great defense from the Hillers. Hubner open for three, gives it up to Kevney. No good on the three. This one bounces over the top of the backboard, out of bounds. But Kevney getting the shot she wants. Her and Prawl have been spotting up around that the left wing there, getting several open shots. Some have fallen, some haven't, but a good area to be shooting from from Hopkinton. Yeah, definitely uh, good ball movement by the Hillers. Got a good shot, just didn't go down. Just under a minute to play in the half. 22-10, Hillers. In the last possession, Seibel and McCarthy had another miscommunication on a pick and roll. We'll see if they can figure that out. Seibel seems to be one of McCarthy's key partners in crime here. Only the third foul this half on the Hillers. So somebody's, somebody just shouted out, it's got to call them both ways. Well, that was only the third foul on the Hillers this, <laughs> this, this uh, half. And the... Medfield's got seven, so things are evening out a little bit, but. Still 22 to 10 lead for Hopkinton. 35 seconds left, 20 seconds on the shot clock. McCarthy being followed by Hudner, trying to prod, see what she can get. The deep three from Anderson, no good. Over the back. Tipped around by Kinney, and she goes over Gogolin's back. The battle between the fours. Goglin wins that round as she draws a foul and will shoot free throw, at least one free throw. That's a one-on-one -on -one situation and good box out by Ivy and she's, I, I don't know exactly Ivy's height, but she's at least 6'1", six, six right. thereabouts. I'd say so, yep. And um, boxing out the taller player, um, Kinney, who's having a nice nice game for for herself, a uh, 6'3 sophomore, and um, Ivy's got a chance for one-on-one. -on -one. First free throw. Did not look like it was going to make it, but she got the kind Hopkinton roll. Hometown bounce. Got to like that. <laughs> Second one. I thought she was going to get the same roll. No good. Kinney with the board. Shot clock off. 20 seconds left for Medfield. Down 13. They can take the final shot if they choose. Uh -oh. oh, and Gogolin. Excuse me. Morningstar read that right away. Saw the pass, the relief pass going to McCarthy. She jumped in front, stole it for an easy deuce. McCarthy, no help. Tried to get it to her teammate, Silk. Shot did not get off in time. And a flurry of defensive activity and some key shot making for Hopkinton. Highlighted by that steal and bucket for Lily Morningstar leaves the Hillers up 15, 25 to 10 after the first half. Yeah, as, as a comparison to the boys game when Medfield had the sort of a chance for the last shot, they were down at that time in the boys game before this and the, Med, they you launched a three-pointer three yep. to kind of give them momentum going into the half. This, the other, the exact opposite situation happened here where right. Medfield had a chance for the final shot and kind of coughed one up and really... The type of pass that my old high school coach in Framingham would have benched me for was a floater, or a floaty as he would call it. Yeah. And um, Lily Morningstar anticipated that. It was almost an easy steal for her. She mm -hmm. went in and took the late. That was a four-point swing potentially. Right. So uh, Hiller's playing some stellar D, 25-10 at the half against an undefeated team. Or uh, undefeated, undefeated in the, in the TVL. In the TVL right. But, you know, that's uh, giving up only 10 points in a half of basketball to anybody is impressive. So... A uh, great start for the Hiller girls uh, in, the, in game two tonight. We'll see what halftime adjustments Mark Nickerson and Mike Greco make. But for right now, things are looking good for Hawkinton. Again, with a 15-point lead, we will see you guys hopefully in the second half after a few minutes. My name is Kurt. My name is Nina. And Gunny. I'm Haley. Hi, my name is Jake. We're the Hiller volleyball team. My name is Emma. My name is May. My name is Shelby. My name is Sophie. We're Al my gal, and we love HKM. Hey, I like to be. Uh, camp. We love, love H Camp, and I volunteer for H Camp TV. And I watch H Camp TV, and I love H Camp TV. And I love H Camp TV. We love H Camp TV. Woo! 
Woo! Do you have what it takes? Will you make a difference? Always an adventure. Police and fire working together. Utilizing the latest technology. Do you have what it takes? We are back here at HCAM. Tim Halatic here with Steve Spector as we get ready for the second half. A pretty different turnout for this game in the first half at least than what we thought. A 15 point lead for Hopkinton, 25 to 10 advantage as Medfield starts the second half with possession to try to kind of whittle this lead down as much as it can. Pass inside to Kinney. Blocked. Partially blocked by Goglin as she collects the rebound. And takes it down for Hopkinton. Kevney had an open three, decided to turn against it. Nice recovery by Lilly. Morningstar driving, kicks it out to Prawl. Ball moving around. Kevney. Ooh, nice steal. Gets her pocket picked by Silk. Excuse me, by Tristani. Great steal from Medfield. Now McCarthy takes it the whole way. Oh. And it looked like a clear poke out there from Morningstar. Foul called. Maggie McCarthy, one on three, taking on three Hiller players. It looked, didn't really see anything going on there, but the, the ref saw it definitely called a foul on Lily, her first. McCarthy's first free throw, no good. Second does find the bottom of the net. 14 point lead now for Hopkinton. And a bit lazy of a pass there from another steal from Corby, another but Morningstar back. takes it right back. Touche. <laughs> right, one good steal deserves another. I mean, the refs, to their credit, are letting them play a little bit there. There's definitely some contact, but pretty, pretty good steals there. A bit too pass happy right now for Hopkinton. Prawl launches a three, no good, but Kevney right there for the board. And Hopkinton, Medfield, sending two defenders to every ball handler as McCarthy had an easy lay and couldn't finish. Now the ball in the hands of Morningstar. Oh. I didn't really see. That was a Euro step. They let that go all the way. All the time. I didn't see the travel. They, that was called a travel. And Morningstar obviously did not agree with the call wiping out a bucket. Now McCarthy steps back, jumper Ooh. is good. Shakes off, Morningstar gets about two feet. Definitely a nice nice play by McCarthy. We don't want to see her get too hot here. You know, we certainly want to have, have her have a nice game, but not, not too good. And again, <laughs> Hopkinton having trouble, a, a bit out. too pass happy. I'll call a time and it all that. starts here um, at the press. Corby and Morningstar are a bit too eager to get rid of the ball without trying to get a good pass going and again another turnover McCarthy launches the three nothing on that one but again coach Greco cannot be happy with what he's seeing Morningstar and Corby normally sure-handed ball handlers but anytime they're sensing a pressure they try to get the, rid of the ball as soon as they can and Medfield is jumping on it starting to predict these passes again that time Tristani was creeping up, forcing the pass to go high, and Corby and Morningstar are not having an easy time dealing with the midfield pressure. Yeah, I would agree. It's un it's uh, uncharacteristic of Corby to be throwing the ball away like that. I don't recall even have her seeing her throw the ball away once, but I'm sure she has. But but to have a couple turnovers like that is a little unusual. Seibel drives, Lots of rejected contact. by Kevney. Great block, staying straight up. 
This time, Medfield not able to get their full ball pressure in effect. Morningstar drives, kicks it over. Prawl for three. Mm. No good. Grabbed by Goglin. Her shot nice. up and in. Ivy Goglin taking over as a muscle for this Hopkinton team. Gets in there with a bucket. And again, McCarthy driving. And I don't want to say the refs are trying to keep Medfield in this game because <laughs> Medfield doesn't need any help. But it seems a lot of the fouls on McCarthy are very quick to be called. She doesn't need any help. She, no. She's a very good player in her own right. Yeah, well, they're hanging around. 27-15, Hillers with five minutes left in the third quarter. Clock hasn't started yet for some reason. That's a, that's a problem. Somebody hasn't started. The, somebody's got to see and that. Now it goes. Wasted about five seconds. Or didn't waste. Gained about five seconds. Morningstar tips the pass. Prevents an easy three. Shot from Anderson. Finds the mark. Metfield outscoring the Hillers. Seven, oh, boy. Seven, Again with seven the, to the two. tough passes. Kevney open for three. Knocks it down. Makes Medfield pay. And a timeout from Coach Greco. Again, the, that one ended with a three-pointer, so all is good there. But again, you, you started to say, oh, no, as he saw that last pass go. And again, uh, no substitutions made, but Morningstar and Corby having all they can handle from this Medfield press. Yeah, I mean, the Medfield's going to make a little run here if they're going to get back in this game. And they, they did, and then the Hillers responded to the, you know, one or two three-pointers can can really shut down uh, the other yeah. team and, and change the momentum quickly. And that one three-pointer was pretty, it was a big one, pretty critical, considering that uh, Medfield was really having their way so far this third quarter. And like you say, uh, there hasn't hasn't been a whole any substitutions yet at four minutes, you know, into the third quarter. So right. we'll see if there's a change up in personnel coming out of this timeout. <laughs> Again, I'm sure Coach Greco is drawing up something or talking to his main ball handlers there. A fake here, fake there. We'll get Medfield out of position. And then, as you see on the other end, left Kevney open for a wide open three, which she has shown she's more than capable of knocking down. I believe that's her third one thus far. And it opens up a 13-point lead for Hopkinton. She's having a nice game. So far, and the Hillers a uh, little, little full court, full court pressure here, just out of the timeout. Anderson driving baseline, tries to get it into Kinney, stolen away by Kevney, and she's looking for some help. Oh, and Anderson almost looked like she rolled her ankle there. Seems to be okay. Morningstar nice. drives, Ooh. gets the right hand on the left side. Tough shot to make, but she made it. The junior makes a nice bucket. Seibel drives, kicks over to Three seconds. Tristani. Now Kinney, shot no good, nice but a box. great box out from Kevney. She's had a couple already today. And great read by Prawl. Her shot just a bit short. Probably should have gone backboard. Nice block by McCarthy yeah, on Ivy. McCarthy Blacks, Goglin from behind. Now Seibel with it at the three-point line. Morningstar, great on-ball defense. Tristani fires the three, mm. knocks it down. Again, the pressure causing problems. Corby this time dribbles out of it. Good idea. Maybe Coach Greco's words echoing in her head. As a missed three from Kevney goes out of bounds, stays with Medfield. Marissa Prowl taking a breather. The Hubner's coming, coming in for her. Fresh legs. Yep, Hubner now on McCarthy. As Morningstar moves over to Anderson. Jumps a pass, quick three from Anderson. A bit short, and Morningstar grabs the board. Now she's on the break, looking for numbers. Great pass to a cutting Hubner. Gets nice. the lay in to go. I almost started clapping on that one. <laughs> Don't want to be too biased. Well, Hubner made a nice play. I was a, had to kind of keep her body under control, kind of going full tilt to the hoop. A nice finish. McCarthy Oof. drives. Morningstar gets in the way of that one. 
McCarthy earning those two free throws. Boy, she got uh, took one for the team there. And that's Lily's third if it's on her. Yep, it is Morningstar's third. She will take a seat. Olivia Gladue will replace her. That was quite a collision. Lily's a tough kid, so she was able to somehow endure that collision. She got run over, basically, but she didn't have her feet set, so. 34-22 lead for That's a foul. Hopkinton as Gladue picks up the foul, and despite... Again, I feel like we say this several times, but despite the way that the game has felt, um, Hopkinton has only lost three points from this halftime lead, still up 12, despite what looks like Medfield really kind of turning the corner in this third quarter. Yeah, well, definitely uh, Medfield is playing with a little sense of desperation. The Hillers are trying to, are playing to not make mistakes. But, they, you know, they're, oh, nice move. Kevney fighting the for the loose ball and a quick jump ball called. But a great effort from Kevney, the senior captain, getting on the floor, fighting for that loose ball. The body's everywhere there. Ooh, right. Corby was open yeah, in front I of the hoop, too. but Hubner either did not see her or did not want it. Gogolin turns around. Nice block by Partially Medfield. blocked, yeah, I believe McCarthy got a hand on that one. Now McCarthy with it at the top of the key with Medfield down 12. Two minutes left here in this third quarter. Tough D, man. Yeah, Hubner playing her role, just harassing McCarthy. And Anderson, a tough shot. Kevney again using her body, boxing out, getting the board. No one is going through Kevney. Nice. Great passing back and forth. Maybe one too many passes, but Gogolin eventually gets off the shot. Couldn't hit the mark, but is fouled and will be shooting too. Good ball movement, and Corby bringing the ball up under control. Um, beat the pressure but down in her in their backcourt, and two or three passes later, Ivy had a nice shot, and she got whacked in the arm by the midfield player. Number 13, Ka Kayla McNeil uh, forward for, for midfield. Yeah. Gogolin knocks down that first free throw, and... Steve, I think we're seeing um, Coach Greco's strategy for beating this press is what we've seen, or what I've seen uh, recently is either Corby or Morningstar dribbling out of the double team themselves instead of um, being pass happy, and that's kind of left med midfield out of sorts and outnumbered on the defensive end. We'll see if midfield changes next, but now Hubner doesn't give them ch a chance for the press but loses the ball to McCarthy. Yeah, there was a case where she was a little out of control there on that coming up the court. Whoa. Whoa. Kenny, a, a long, long two. The Kevin Garnett shot, the one step inside <laughs> the line. Took a big hop before that one. No travel called, but two points anyway. Nice. And a great look from Hubner to Kevney. Just gets that lay in to go in. Almost like that Medfield layup from earlier. Too much time, too much space. From the boys' game, anyway, but Kevin yep. manages to fall. 38 24 lead now. Oh, nice play. And wide open is McNeil. Her shot goes in. And a flurry of activity now. Hubner with it. Oh. And she lit, tosses it away, and McCarthy, unfortunately, happened to be running at the perfect time for Hopkinton. Knees that ball out of bounds. And Gladue will inbound for Hopkinton. And this one last off of Medfield. Now Morningstar will come back in for the last 30 seconds. She still has those three fouls, so something to keep track of. Morningstar gets the ball, and a nice idea, split that double team, knew she could do it. Got caught up a bit and drew the foul. I don't know how she got through those two players. They were almost shoulder to shoulder, but she sort of meandered her way through. Yeah, kind of stepped right through there yep. and managed to pick up a With foul. With the ball, no right. less. You know, it wasn't even room for her, but somehow she, <laughs> she and the ball got through there, and she got whacked going through for a foul. Hubner at the top of the key for some relief on that inbound play. 
two seconds to separate the shot clock and the game clock. Hopkinton can take the final shot if they wish. Hubner steps up for three. Corby wide open, gets it back. And again, normally I'm a, I'm a proponent of dribb dribbling it back out and taking the, those extra time, but she was wide open had she looked. But Hopkinton still a great play from Corby to crash the board, get another opportunity for Hopkinton. And open for three was Hubner. She takes a tough shot. Oh, that's a foul. <laughs> <laughs> Kevin coming came in late with the with the tomahawk <laughs> foul, no less. I don't want to embellish, but that was a yeah. It, it was it was a foul, <laughs> over the top chop kind of thing, you know. And now Morningstar will sit back out for defensive reason for uh, foul trouble reasons, not defensive. She's arguably their best on ball defender. Eleven point eight seconds left. Hillers with a twelve point lead have had to withstand a 16-point quarter from Medfield, but the Hillers doing just enough to stay in front. Oh. A great block from Gogolin. Maybe Anna Wytrecki maybe got confused by the Hiller chance of the clock yep. winding down. That's an old trick that won't go away. Nope. <laughs> it's tough. It can definitely get you if you're not looking right at uh -oh. the shot clock. And a miscommunication on the inbounds play there leaves Medfield with no shot opportunity at the end of the third. 38-26 lead for Hopkinton. It looks like we're handing it over for yet another 50-50 raffle. Well, Tim, uh, going into the fourth quarter here, the Hillers have a 12-point lead. Um, Medfield definitely had their momentum in the third quarter most of the time, but the Hillers right. kind of pushed back a little bit, and, and um, they had a 15-point halftime lead. The, the lead's down to 12 points, and, you know, we'll see if they uh, continue that trend. Uh, but right now it's a, it's a, it's a great Tri-Valley League battle between two of the elite teams. On the girls' side, and in the Friday night here in the gym, usually I think we usually would see more students here. There are some, but the, not one of the bigger crowds we've seen. Again, the weather is ridiculous out there. Yep, it is very, it very cold. It hurts to take the trash out. It's so <laughs> cold, you know. But the Hillers are in a well positioned to uh, complete the, the sweep here of Med Medfield. That would be wonderful if you're rooting for the Hillers. <laughs> McCar McCarthy starts with the ball for Medfield again, down 12 here in the final quarter. What looks to be the final quarter. McCarthy doing a lot to try to get a shot off. Seibel for three, knocks it down. And Corby tries to dribble out of the double team there and picks up a foul. On McCarthy, her second. Yep, Medfield had a lot of success uh, with their full court press, so they're going to continue with that. I, I don't blame them. This time, though, pass right to Hubner. Marissa Prawl driving baseline. Great passing. Hubner open for three. Side to turn it down. Gets it back to Gogolin. Plenty of time. Prawl thought about it. Seven seconds left on the clock. Prawl getting harassed. Gogolin falls on the loose ball. Her and Kinney fight for it and a jump ball. And Medfield uh, swarming. That was a that was a pretty important hoop for them. They started the fourth quarter with a quick three pointer. Brings the cuts the lead to nine. One second for Gogolin. Shot up. Can't get it to go. And McCarthy grabs the board. Whoops. Patree grabs it. She loses the ball, and great play by Hubner. Tough player. Dove, dove, just launched herself in to get that ball, landed kind of on her face. Doesn't seem to have any concern. And for her efforts, gets the uh, jump ball. This one goes to Medfield, but a great play nonetheless from Hubner. A 
McCarthy again creating distance with that setback. Declined to shoot it this time, but still a nice move in her arsenal. So the offense is definitely flowing through her. Anderson fires the three, no good. Corby, Corby grabs the ball away. Easy. Good eyes from Corby, gets it up to Hubner. Now open to Kevney for three. No good, but a great, great ball movement there. I, think I believe that fell on Prawl. Yep, from behind, pushed her over. Unfortunately for her, as the referee was right behind her and saw her, saw the infraction, so to speak. Yeah, probably would have let it go had yeah. Hubner not been there to take the ball away, but right. had to call it. And Medfield takes over, down just nine now. Ball inside to Kinney. She's met by Gogolin. Has to give it back out. McCarthy looking across court to McNeil. Tough D. Oh. And a late foul called on Kevney. With just four seconds left on the shot clock. Now Medfield will get a fresh 30. That was unfortunate. The clock, as you say, was winding down. They were kind of in a tough spot. Medfield was. Go, uh, Morningstar jumps in front of that pass, knocks it away from Emma Anderson. Luckily for Medfield, stays in Big Blue's possession and another chance at points here. Down just nine. Anderson fires a quick shot, short. Goglin lets it go. And it rolls out of bounds, awarded to Hawkinton. Ball gets inside to Kevin. She needs help. Great play from the senior. She wanted a timeout, but was hit with a foul instead. Kind of got bailed out. Yeah, she one. got lucky on that. I mean, it was a good play for her to call for the timeout. She should have gotten that, but instead she got fouled. And works out in Hopkinton's favor. I'm sure Coach Nickerson isn't too pleased. Corby, Cor Corby tries to dribble out of trouble and launches a tough pass that Kevney can't handle. Another turnover there for Hopkinton. Seibel doing all she can to get the ball to McCarthy. She does eventually. McCarthy is the beginning and end of this midfield offense. The deep <laughs> three from Seibel, high arcing. One. Manages to find the mark, and Morningstar dribbles past the double team. Oh, she traveled. She and did. she traveled, and now Hawkinson just out. up six. Oh, starting to team. crumble at the seams here a bit. Well, 15 point lead down to six is certainly, uh, got to tip your hat to Medfield, not giving up, and definitely having their way the second half. Kenny drives. That's a travel And too, she yeah. is hit with a travel. Made a nice play to get the ball to Kayla McNeil, who had what looked to be a decent opportunity at points, but a travel nullifies that. I don't know if there's a timeout or? I, I believe there's a wet spot on the floor oh, from what I can gather from the body language there. Yep, as the referee goes to clean this up. Jeanette Both teams Emerson. get a free timeout. Yep. Our trainer doing, in addition to taking care of the players, is taking care of the uh, the playing surface. Seems to be some... Maybe dried blood. Condensation. <laughs> Hopefully it's not dried blood. It could be. With all the, the times that all these girls have been on the floor, you never know. I think Kate Hubner had a little face plant down there. I don't know, hopefully there's nothing, though. But anyway, hopefully it's not blood. It's just some condensation from the uh, the frost in the building. <laughs> <laughs> but certainly, geez, they don't see that too often. But this game has definitely turned, uh, taken a turn for the worse for Hopkinton, up 25 to 10 at halftime, now just up six. Only up 38 to 32. The press from Millis, uh, again, from Medfield <laughs> has caused a lot, a lot of problems for Hopkinton as they can't seem to beat it. And Hubner 
manages to get it into Gogolin. And now Hawkinton does beat it that time, but it seems to take all their effort every time just to get past half court. McCarthy playing very aggressive defense. Shot clock at 10. Bat pass inside to Goglin, stolen away. McNeil oh. fouled by Gogolin. I didn't see any, I mean, I, just, I didn't see much body contact. I saw a, a, a good block by Ivy, but there must have been some body contact down low. I couldn't see it from here. It's first time for everything. <laughs> <laughs> As McNeil gets ready for the first of two. Spins out. 4.33 left in the fourth quarter. Hiller's uh, sort of clinging to a six-point lead. I say that because they had a 15-point lead mm -hmm. a little while ago. Second free throw rolls in. It seems like Hawkinson, like you were saying, is playing not to make mistakes, not to lose, and that's not working against this well, midfield team. That's a little nudge. That there. was definitely a foul, not called. Goglin gets the ball down low. Another foul, not called. Goglin slapped across the wrist there. No free throws awarded. Now Seibel with it for Medfield. Pass inside, nice. taken look away up, by Goglin. She oh. tries to get it up to Morningstar, who had broken apart away from the crowd. But, and, uh, excuse me, McCarthy knocked it out of bounds. Stays with Hopkinton, though. Killers need a hoop here. Stayed in the obvious, but it's been quite a while. Again, tough. Oh, nice save. Having a lot of trouble. Goglin. Morningstar drives, tries to get the board, and then Hubner forces the travel on McCarthy. Tough play there against the senior captain from Medfield, but a turnover goes to Hopkinton. That's a tight call there. Gogolin gets hacked, and she will be shooting too. The steady hand of Ivy Gogolin. Well, this is where the free throws really can make or break the game here. She's got two. Could use them both. Short on the first. Second one rattles home. Six point lead now for Hopkinton. 345 left in the fourth quarter. Call a timeout. Yeah. Coach Nickerson calling Interesting. a quick timeout. Didn't look like they were in any sort of trouble, but timeout called nonetheless. I don't know. I mean, I'm, I'm not a, I'm not a coach. I don't, I don't deserve to be a coach because I don't, I don't have that those kind of qualifications. But that was a, an unusual time to call, mm -hmm. call a timeout. Yeah, I'm to say to the say. least. Uh, Medfield had a nice shot at the hoop, and uh, Coach Nickerson decided to at that moment didn't see didn't, saw something I didn't like. Call the timeout. We got 339 left, six point lead for the Hillers, and it seems tighter than that because right. the second half has been mostly Medfield. Yeah, ball well. handling presenting a key issue here for Hopkinton. Normally not the case, but whoever has been in there has had trouble handling the not only just the Medfield press, but just the ball pressure in general. Medfield sending two players aggressively after whoever has the ball. And for the most part, Hopkinton has been overwhelmed and out of sorts and has really, really, really shut down offensively in the second half. We'll see if they can do enough to hold out the victory. But Medfield is not making it easy, especially with McCarthy doing basically what she wants out there offensively. Kevney with a nice ceiling off the baseline. Anderson ends up with it. Two seconds left. She Lock. throws up the tough shot. And Corby grabs the board. Look out. Triple team. Did not look for the, at that pass. McCarthy made a great play to try to steal it away. Now Kevney ends up with an open three. Doesn't get it to go. And Hubner almost snuck in there for the rebound. But again, this, these Hopkinton passes not looking before and telegraphing the pass is a lucky break for them there. And then on the other end, 
A foul as Medfield again will go to the free throw line. Yep, I think it's on Kevin. Just under three minutes left, six point lead. Sort of, we're just staying there with our arms straight up. And uh, number 13, Kayla McNeil, sophomore forward, five foot 11, kind of created the contact, but. No good on the first free throw for Kayla McNeil. Tough break there for Medfield, but another shot on the way. That one Ooh. falls out the exact same way, and then an over the back on Kinney. I believe that's her second or third of the game. In a one and one situation. That takes points away from Medfield and gives them an opportunity right to Hopkinton. And we just saw <coughs> Kevin e has her, she has four fouls, so we'll have to obviously keep an eye on that. But at, the, at this point, you got to keep her out there. Yep. She's one of the best players on the team. Yep. And we'll see how these free throws go. One and one. Knocks it down. That's a big swing that Medfield had two free throws, missed them both. Could have cut the lead to four. Right. And now it's the lead at seven and hopefully eight. Hopefully indeed. Yep. Eight points. Kevney with two clutch, clutch free throws. Three minutes, two minute, one minute. They're all clutch at this point. And two big ones there from the senior captain. Gogolin steals the ball right away. Again, Kinney bringing it down low. Not that Gogolin's small, but allows Gogolin to reach her hands in there and try to take it tough away. Shot. Seibel, tough look. Couldn't get it. Kevney with the board. Under control. Under control. And Corby, you could, nice. you could feel a bad pass coming, but uh, she got it out of trouble. But Kevney couldn't handle it. Lost it through the five hole out of bounds. Two twenty two left. Eight point lead for the Hillers. McCarthy wanted the three, thought about it. Takes a deep two. No good. Grabbed by Gogolin. Again, Gogolin too with a quick pass. One on three. This Medfield team is hounding these. Ball handlers looking for any opportunity they can get. Gogolin using her body there, drawing the contact from Kinney. Great play from the senior captain. She'll be shooting one and one. And that's the fourth, uh, third foul on Kinney, who's had a nice game for sophomore center, kind of forward center player. Gogolin, another clutch free throw. The senior captain stepping up big from the stripe here for Hopkinton. Second is good as well. Four clutch free throws from the senior captains, Gogolin and Kevney, and that opens up a now a double-digit lead, 43-33 with two minutes left. Yeah, that's a big, you know, four big free throws uh, by the Hillers to extend the lead from six to ten points with two, exactly two and minutes left. And it could left. have been down to four, like you said before. Yeah, that's a big swing. And uh, I think Coach Greco called that timeout. Um, not, not sure... Uh, well, just get, getting everybody on the same page. There's nothing wrong with that. Right. And while we have some time here, Hopkinton girls' next game coming at, it will be at Bellingham uh, next Friday at 6.30 p.m., another TVL matchup. And, again, we said the boys will be here in Hopkinton on Friday hosting Bellingham at 6.30. And, again, while we have some time, want to give a shout-out to our crew who's been doing double duty with us here today. We got Bob Hamilton. John Ritz, Mary Arnott on cameras, Tom Dings as the director, and Samantha Dings on graphics. Thank you guys for coming out on this cold day along with us. Some of them have their gloves on up here. <laughs> <laughs> we won't name any names. Mary, uh, she had her hat on earlier, but she took the hat off, but she still has her gloves. Most everybody has their coats on in the right. gym here. Us included. Yep. We'll have to talk to the... Uh, Administration, the Hoppington mm -hmm. administration, about the heat. I know you got some pull there. You, you're neighbors with half the town. Yeah, well, I don't know about that, but <laughs> it's worth asking about. <laughs> Anderson, the three. Excuse me, McCarthy with the three. No good. Grabbed by Hubner. Nice play she by finds him. some relief in Kevney. And McCarthy just takes it away. Oh, and Gogolin, nice. excuse me, Morningstar. I've been confusing them all day, oddly enough. Morningstar pokes it out from behind. Both clean steals. 
And a nice play by the cheerleader, by the way, <laughs> stopping the ball from going way out of bounds. You know, she's in the middle of a routine with the pom-poms, and, and it's good reflexes there. McCarthy comes off the pick, gets the pass, and is fouled by Gogol, and two free throws coming up for the senior. First one goes down. Now just a nine-point deficit for Medfield. 138 left here in the fourth. Second one is good as well. Now just an eight-point lead for Hopkinton. Now it's up to Morningstar and Corby. See if they can break this press. And Goglin finds Morningstar. She looks to take it the whole way. She does, oh, oh, and oh, one, oh, oh. Lily Morningstar. The and one scoop lay-in. Again, using her right hand from that left side. Tough layup to do while getting fouled nonetheless, which she knocks it down. Huge play there was, for Hopkinton. That was a slick move there by Lily coming up, up and under with the right hand, as you said. And one of those situations where you almost want to run the clock down, but she, she took it to the hoop, made a beautiful play. He'll take play. the bucket in that, in that instance. Uh, no good on the three-point play. Free throw was a bit short. Now Seibel launches the three. No good, grabbed by Morningstar. Morningstar patiently reading this defense, gets it in the hands of Corby. Now Hopkinton seems to have themselves under control. Gets it into Gogol and dribbling this clock out. Now a minute left, 10 seconds left on the shot clock. Hopkinton doing a great job not getting into any trouble. Kevin, he fires the floater just a bit short, gets the rebound, no good. And ends up tipping the ball out of bounds, but great effort there from senior captain. Wasted about 10 more seconds there in that exchange. Yeah, that was valuable seconds, you know, that uh, was run off there in that play. Got a good shot off, just didn't go down. McCarthy into Kinney, no good on the shot. And second opportunity, no good, grabbed by Gogolin. And that might do it here as Morningstar looks to find some relief. Humner up to Kevney, and now Hopkinton can dribble out the remainder of this shot clock. Ten second difference between the shot and game clock. Corby, good job to get it over. Playing keep away right now. Kevney drives, probably got fouled, no call. Misses the shot. Now ten seconds left for Medfield. And that should do it again, down ten. McCarthy the deep three. Almost good. Morningstar grabs the board, now in the hands of Kevney, and that should do it. A tightly contested TVL battle. Took a big turn here in the second half as we thought Hawkington was going to run away with it, but they still do manage to take home a 10-point victory, double-digit victory, and improve to 7-1 and one overall, 6-0 in the TVL, firmly implanting themselves at the top of the TVL race. Hey, Tim, great, great night doing the games with you tonight. We had two in a row, and uh, good to see two Hoppington victories. Right. And um, Medfield's got to hop on that bus, that cold bus, and go <laughs> home after, you know, um, getting it handed to him a little bit by the, by the Hillers. But you got to give Medfield credit. They were down by 15 at the half. They got it down to six, and then they kind of ran out of gas and time uh, in the fourth quarter. But you gotta got to love the effort by the Hillers. They're really well positioned. They're kind of taking it to the Tri-Valley League so far. And um, congratulations to both Hiller teams tonight. All right, Medfield drops to six and three overall, four and one now in the TVL. Again, Hopkinton up to seven and one, six and zero oh in the TVL. And they will be at Bellingham on Friday at 6.30. For Steve Spector, I am Tim Palatic. Thank you guys for joining us on this double dip. And we hope to see you next time.